Hello, I'm Paul from Paul Rance Art, and welcome back to the studio. Today's Bob Ross classic is At Dawn's Light. It's a lovely peachy gold painting, but not without a few hidden traps. But I'll point those out to you as we go along. So, sit back with your favourite beverage, maybe a cup of tea, and watch me paint it. My canvas for today's painting is a 16 inch by 20 inch canvas. I'm going to be setting the horizon line a little below halfway. I'll use a couple of map pins as markers. I use a brush to measure. While we're on the subject of brushes, today I'll be using two one inch brushes, this nice new one, and this slight older one. This is the one I'll be using to apply liquid white. I'll also be using a Bob Ross palette knife, a fan brush, and of course a liner brush, and a new brush. I'm going to be using this, and it's a Bob Ross half round brush. This is a lovely brush for applying foliage. It has very long, soft bristles, slightly oval in shape. This is a wet on wet oil painting technique. So the first step is to apply a coat of this, Bob Ross liquid white oil paint. I use it from this little pot. It's got a nice wide neck, so it's easy to get my brush into. I'm using this old one inch brush to apply a thin, even coat to my canvas. The wet on wet technique relies upon starting with a wet oil base upon which we blend all the colours. I'll make sure that everywhere has a thin even coat. To test my canvas I'm going to use my fingertips, a different finger for a different area and have a check. I want to see this, fingerprints, not too much and not too little. I made a video all about how to use liquid white properly, I'll put a link in the description below. On my palette, I have the following colours, Titanium White, Prussian Blue, some Black, Van Dyke Brown, lots of Dark Sienna, which I actually didn't use, Alizarin Crimson, Cad Yellow, Yellow Ochre, and some Red. Yellow Ochre, well, let's try to make a break for it. I'll put a sticky blaster on it. I'm gonna use this old one inch brush again. Dry clean it really well, squeeze out all that liquid white. My first colour is Cad Yellow, brush mixed with some red. I want a warm, fiery orange colour for my sky. I like the brush mix, it gives me a nice variation of colours and it's quick and simple to do, rather than mixing up a lot of one colour which might be wrong. I'm going to go to the right of centre and just a little bit above that horizon line. There we go, just a bit above. This is a painting called At Dawn's Light and this is where I'm going to have my bright glow in the sky. And I'm blending my colours out well. But take care, liquid white will make your sky paler. So you may wish to add more colour and build up the strength. Use your own judgement as to how strong you want the sky, but don't have it too pastel. Of course, there's water, so I'm going to be reflecting it down below. Now be careful, my top tip for this painting is to extend this colour further across the canvas than you think. There's a group of trees here and on the left of it, it looks a bit strange if the colour suddenly runs out. My second colour is a brush mixture of yellow ochre and some red. Again, this needs to be brush mixed to make a lovely peachy colour. Same dirty brush, don't bother washing it. And I'm going to put this above and obviously below the first mix of colours. On the same brush, I'm now going to add a lizarding crimson. This is quite a strong colour, so I take just a small amount, but rub it in well. I'm looking for a lovely cherry colour. That looks about right. I use very loose crisscross strokes and very broken upward strokes for the water. It'll make blending easier. I'm going to use this nice one inch brush to blend my sky, starting with this bright yellow area. Crisscross and work your way slowly out. I don't want to see any hard edges. Occasionally stop and dry clean your brush. This stops it clogging up. Using the first brush, I now want to mix up a lavender colour, Prussian blue and a little bit of alizarin crimson. I want a nice soft lavender colour. Don't make it look too blue. This goes in the top left and right hand corners and of course pull up a little bit from the bottom corners as well. This will focus your eye to the centre of the canvas a bit more. 
and of course this needs blending as well. My final colour is a little bit of black, a little bit of Prussian blue and maybe just a touch of alizarin crimson. This is the darkest colour for the very corners of my painting. I want to add a bright spot right here in my sky but both my one inch brushes, well they're dirty. So here's my top tip, use a palette knife. I'm going to take a little blob of titanium white paint about the size of a frozen pea, not too much, and I'm going to use this to smear on some white to my canvas. Firm pressure and really push this down into that background colour. You want this to get a really good grip. That's it. Work it in well and then use a nice soft fan brush and gently blend out. If you overdo it or you didn't get enough on, you can always add some more. Again, press it in firmly and then just gently smear it out. A little bit more soft blending and that's it. The glow is complete. You can even add some little outward strokes. They look like little rays of light. I use the same technique to add a glow of light across the surface of the water. Firm pressure, press and pull down and then blend up and down gently with the fan brush. I want to paint some little fir trees on my horizon line and for this I need some lavender, a small amount of alizarin crimson and probably about one quarter of Prussian blue. Mix this up well and check your colour. It doesn't want to be too blue. There we are. Nice mauve. And to this I'm going to add some titanium white. I want to just take some of that strength out and make it look a little bit more pastel. That's about right. But for my little trees I want them to be even more pastel. I'll add some more white to some of that colour. I'm just looking for something that's just strong enough to show up. That looks about right. I'm going to use the fan brush. It's got a little bit of white on it from the sky, but that's okay. And I'm going to load this brush very well. Can't emphasize that enough. You need to get plenty of paint through the bristles, give it a little wiggle, and make sure you put plenty of color on the corners. It wants to be what's known as a chiseled edge. I just had a few small marks to show the horizon line. But I do like to plan a little bit. So I use the end of my brush to scratch on the size of my trees. I don't want to lose all of my glow in the sky. I'll use some of this lavender color just to mark the centers of my tree. Just touch and leave a little line. Now, tip the brush over and handle down using one corner just lightly touch the canvas and leave a little imprint of the bristles. As you press down, it makes the branches of a fir tree. He could probably be a bit darker, but he'll do to get started. Add more trees, but use the original sizes as a gauge. Once you've added a few, you can go back and fill in any gaps. You want this to look like a nice little forest of trees with the dawn light rising behind it. I used a little bit of that slightly darker lavender we made for some land and again just dabbing. I want lots of lovely texture. I want to use this nice one inch brush. I dry cleaned it for some reflections. Just grab that little bit of paint, press firmly and pull down. For taller trees turn the brush on its edge and pull down a little further. Now for some snow. Pull out some titanium white paint with that one inch brush. I remember to dry clean it first. Just press into the paint and press again onto the canvas. The lavender paint is quite sticky and the white should stick 
quite easily, but don't go back over it time and again. It quickly gets very muddy looking. I need to add some water lines, and for this I pull out my titanium white paint and tap my palette knife into it. I want just a very tiny amount on the edge of the knife. Now, firm pressure. Push and slide your knife along. Don't be afraid to bend the blade a little. Try and stay nice and level. It's very easy for everything to look like it's going up or downhill. And it doesn't have to be a continuous line. Allow little breaks to happen. It looks much more natural. I've darkened that lavender colour with some more blue and crimson. And I'm using that same old brush, pressing into the paint and then using it to make a textured area of land on the right hand side. Think of the shape being like a bird's beak, about a third the way across, not much further. Tap and fill in a nice area of dark land. As you create this shape, think about having the bottom edge sloping down rather than going up. It looks more inviting and easier on the eye. I've turned my brush on edge and pressing into that same dark colour, I want to make some foliage, maybe a nice bush. I make some nice rounded shapes with my brush, just tapping to create some texture. Think about painting one big bush as several little rounded lumps. As the paint runs out on your brush, think about doing a reflection. It doesn't have to be exactly the same, just something similar, about the same size, with roughly the same proportions. Let's add a few branches. I've got my liner brush with a couple of drops of thinners on it. And as you can see, I'm thinning out my lavender paint to make it thin like ink, not too runny. Now. Hold the brush well back and think about using the brush as though it were a pen. I'll try and keep my hand out of the way. As you can see, I paint with just the very tip of the brush. I start at the bottom and work up. Each time I go up, I thicken the trunk and it's an easy way of adding branches. I'll be putting some snowy highlights on this, so just a few branches will do. Let's try that new brush. The half round oval. Press it into that titanium white paint, it doesn't have to be perfectly clean and as you can see this lovely fluffy brush produces a really lovely speckly look to the bristles. Don't clog it up though, keep it nice and open and lacy. Touch gently. The lavender colour again is very sticky and dry and the snowy highlights should stick easily. It's very tempting to put on lots of highlights, but try and resist. Leave some dark shadows. They add depth to your painting. For smaller bushes, simply turn the brush 90 degrees. That way, you'll only be using slightly less of the bristles. Now for some small trees, I've thinned down some Van Dyke Brown and I'll add a little black to the colour on my liner brush. Again, hold the brush at the very end and pick a nice wiggly line up, 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 up and lift off with a little flourish. Position it so that the next tree doesn't look like it's still falling over so maybe a little more upright. Make sure these trees are taller than your background evergreens. It'll push them back in the seam. And again, these are just going to be supporting branches. There'll be some foliage and some highlights. So we only need 
a few branches. I'm using my nice one inch brush with a little bit of that pale lavender colour and a little bit of that dark lavender colour. I want something sort of midway between the two just to underpaint some of this foliage. I'm using just one corner of my brush and I don't want to overfill it. I want this part of my painting not to look too heavy. I just tap across the branches and leave just the suggestion of a little shadow here and there. Then the nice half round oval brush again I add some snowy highlights. These are all very subtle colours and it's easy to overdo it. Whilst I have a little bit of paint left on my brush I'll drop in some reflections of the tree trunks and I'll add a little bank using my palette knife and some of the dark lavender colour. I want to pull my knife at a nice angle. Imagine land sloping down to the water's edge. Just touch and pull and let the paint break. We'll add a little snow using the same technique. A small roll of paint very lightly held in the hand on my knife and just touch and drag and where it sticks it sticks and where it doesn't it breaks and makes a lovely shadow. Tricky areas just use the small end of the knife. I dry clean my nice one inch brush again and I'm just going to reach in here and just press and pull down for reflections. Then from the edge to the centre pull gently across the reflections. I just want to disturb the paint a little and make it look like it's got a little bit of a shimmer across it. Finally I tap a little bit of white paint onto the edge of my knife and add a few water lines just as we did with the background land. Let's move to the other side of our painting and plan where we might want to put some more land. I like using the point of my knife just to scratch in a few layout lines. If I don't like them I can always rub them out with a brush. I position three trees. Two of them will be silver birches and the last one a fir tree. Now just as before on the other side I start with my one inch brush and some of that lovely dark lavender colour again just tapping in some land masses but hold on there's a trap think about reflections now what would happen to our reflections if I fill this in with dark my reflections are going to run into my land bank so I don't complete that section just yet I'll wait till I've got my trees in place. I've cleaned and reloaded my fan brush with some of that lovely dark lavender colour, just like I did on the background trees. I want it to be slightly bigger again to push the background trees further away in my painting. But just as before, I paint on just one corner of the brush, handle held out and down, just tapping. I want lots of little arrow shapes and as I come down, I might press a little harder and go a little further left and right. But put in the basic shape first. Then, when you're happy, you can go back over it and increase the size and make the tree darker. It's very easy to make trees that are narrow at the top and far too wide at the bottom. Now we can drop in the reflection. This just has to be approximately the right sort of size but it doesn't have to be too dark. Just tap in a little bit of colour and as before with a nice clean one inch brush, yes I gave it a quick wash, pull down and brush gently across towards the centre of the painting. Don't start in the centre and pull to the edge. You might leave a dirty mark right in the middle of the water. Now we can carry on with the dark underpainting. This is definitely not the pretty phase of my painting, but you need dark to show highlights, so fill it in completely. I'm going to add some background foliage to my painting. 
I've been playing with my colours, trying a little more crimson, then a little bit more blue, and it's fun to play. So don't restrict yourself to just one colour. I'm going to add a little sapling on the left, and maybe I'll increase this background foliage to the top of the canvas. My sapling needs a few branches. I'm going to use a liner brush and some thinned Van Dyke Brown and black. I'll add some more sticks and twigs to this background foliage too. To underpaint my birch tree trunks, I'm going to use some Van Dyke Brown with a little bit of black. Take a small roll of paint on the knife and using those layout lines, just touch and pull to one side. I just want to get the position right. This one's going to go right to the very top. This one, a little smaller. Again, just touch and pull. I'll finish the left hand side by putting my knife the other way. Now for some highlights. I want my birch trees to reflect the dawn light. So I'm tinting my titanium white with a little bit of the orangey yellow colors I used earlier. Take a little roll of paint and touch the right hand side of the tree, the side closest to the light. And I'm using a little curving stroke, just whoops and up. This gives the idea that your tree is rounded. It's a very quick, short stroke, and it takes a little practice, but it's worth doing to get lovely birch trees. I've mixed a small amount of white and a touch of Prussian blue, and I'm going to use this for something called referred light. This is light bouncing back from things like trees and bushes and paths. We have it in real life too, but you have to look carefully for it. If you enjoy my videos, consider giving me a thumbs up. You can leave a comment, maybe even subscribe. It all helps to grow my channel. If you want to do a little more, you can even buy me a coffee. I spend all the money on materials. Thank you. Now, Time to add some underpainting. This is the same process I've used on the other trees. Adding a dark sticky layer first gives something for the highlights to stick to and show up against. For my highlights, I'll carry on using the half round brush and lots more of that lovely off-white peachy colour. I'll be doing this for the big trees, the background trees, the foreground bushes. My top tip is take your time. Do a little, stand back, enjoy the process, don't rush it. This is the fun part. The bushes at the base of the trees are slightly in shadow, so I'm going to go into some of this more sort of soft pastel lavender colour for a highlight. This brush adds lovely frosty effects to my painting and it's so easy to want to fill it up completely. Once again, save a little shadow. It adds so much more atmosphere to your painting and you might want to come back and add a little more highlight. I'm probably going to add a little peachy colour over the top. Now for a path, I'll start with the short edge of my knife first. Just hold the knife gently and let the paint break. Even make a little bit of a shallow dip in the centre. It indicates a little bit of wear on the path. Let a few little bits of foliage trail over the edge of the path. It's a small touch, but it has a certain quality to your paintings. Now with the final touches. A little waterline here, and a few sticks and twigs. 
just use the edge of the knife to push up. A few scratchy sticks and twigs as well. Finally, a signature. If you've enjoyed this, watch another one. Have a lovely snow scene called Through the Window coming next. Happy painting, people! <laughs>